now 31, let's take a look at example 7. We're going to find each quotient and write the answer in standard form, in A plus BI form. And taking a look at this quotient, you might think it's it's looking suavemente, you're pretty happy with it, but math folks aren't happy with it because there's this I in the denominator and we really don't like when radicals are in the denominator. And keep in mind, this is a radical. It's five minus five square roots of negative one over three plus a square root of negative one. So math folks are not into having radicals on the denominator and the question comes up, well, how can I get rid of that? Well, you can get rid of that by multiplying by a conjugate. We talked in example six about how when you multiply conjugates together, then you go from being starting with complex numbers and ending with real numbers. So what we're going to do here, and the mechanics for something like this, is whenever you encounter a radical in the denominator or a radical in the form of an imaginary number in the denominator, multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. All right, and the conjugate to three plus i is three minus i. Again, the threes are the same, the i's are the same, but the subtraction and addition signs, right, those are in contrast to one another. And if you look at what I'm multiplying this expression by, I'm multiplying it by one, right? So three minus i in ratio to itself is one, so I'm not changing my original problem. But by multiplying by this special version of one, I'm gonna be able to algebraically manipulate this expression and get it to the form a plus bi, where there's no i's in the denominator. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. Now, with any fraction, if you have binomials or any nomials in the numerator and denominator, they're protected by parentheses. So let's make sure we're paying attention to those. If you wanna FOIL, go for it. You know me, I'm gonna double distribute. So let's take a look at our numerator. I have five being distributed to three minus i, and I have negative five i being distributed to three minus i. In the denominator, I have three getting distributed to three minus three i, and then another i, three minus three i. Now be careful, I can't go canceling these, all right? I can't cancel binomials, just I can't cancel one term of a binomial. I'd have to cancel the entire binomial to the entire binomial, and I don't have that in this case. All right, I'm gonna keep on distributing, here we go. So we've got 15 minus 5i minus 15i plus 5i squared. Here I have 9 minus 3i plus 3i minus i squared. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. I see my i squared, so I'm gonna swap them out with negative ones. So I have 15 minus 5i minus 15i minus five, because five times negative one will ultimately be negative five. Here I have nine minus three i plus three i. All right, minus i squared would be plus one. All right, let's see what kind of like terms I have now. So on the numerator, I have a 15 and a minus five. So I'm gonna have a 10. And on the imaginary side of things, I have negative five minus 15, so I have negative 20 i. On the denominator, I have nine and one, so I have another 10. And wouldn't you know, our imaginary parts cancel out. And then that is by design. That's what we wanted. We wanted no more imaginary numbers on the denominator. So you'll see, I had a radical in the denominator initially. It's gone, right? That's the whole beauty of multiplying by the conjugate. Now, I still haven't quite finished this problem off. I need to use my little alien errors and simplify this. So this is 10 over 10 minus 20i over 10i, excuse me, 20i over 10. These are gonna cancel or simplify to one. 20 over 10 is two, so I have one minus two i, and I am now in standard form, a plus bi, okay? All right, so I'm gonna scooch the page up and we're gonna do the exact same thing for part b. Okay, so let's take a look. I see this conjugate, or not the conjugate, excuse me. I see this quotient but I see a radical or an imaginary number down here in the denominator. And I think, well, that's bad news bears. Math folks don't like that. So let's fix it. I'm gonna multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And if I have two minus i on the denominator, its conjugate will be two plus i. 
All right, so let me write, or write, let me multiply top and bottom by two plus i. And it's always the conjugate of the denominator because you wanna get the imaginary numbers out of the denominator. You're more than welcome to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, it's just not gonna get you anywhere. It will leave you with i's or radicals in the denominator. So you wanna multiply by the conjugate of the denominator to get those radicals or those imaginary numbers out. All right, I'm gonna protect them with some parentheses and it's double distribution time. Again, if you wanna FOIL, go for it. So I've got negative three distributed to two plus i. I've got four i distributed to two plus i. I've got two distributed to two plus i. And I've got a minus i distributed to two plus i. I'm gonna keep on going. I call it double distribution because I have to distribute once and then I gotta distribute again. All right, so negative six plus three i plus eight i plus four i squared. And then we've got four plus two i minus two i minus i squared. All right, let's see what we got. I'm gonna swap my i squareds out. So I've got negative six plus three i plus eight i. Ooh, actually, if I look at this, I believe I made a typo, because look, we have negative three times positive two is negative six and I forgot to distribute the negative. Negative three times positive i. Hold up, let me switch that. Okay, so I found my typo, that's great. It looks like plus eight i. Um, positive four times negative one will be negative four. All right, and then here we will have four plus two i minus two i. All right, if I subtract a negative one, that is positive one. And you might be getting to the point where you're thinking, you know, I'm just gonna combo these steps together. I'm not gonna switch this to negative one and then go add the like terms. I'm gonna do both at the same time. That's totally fine. I just don't wanna skip steps while I'm in the video. So here we go, like terms. We got negative six minus four, I got a negative 10. Uh, negative three plus eight will be positive five i. All right, by design, these cancel. They should, that was the whole point. Four plus one is five. And similar to example A, these numbers are dividing nicely uh, because 10 is gonna get divided by five nicely and so will five and five. If they didn't divide nicely, the answer would still work. It would just be a fraction. We wouldn't be able to reduce it to an integer. So let's take a look here. It, I've got negative 10 over five plus five i over five. So I am ultimately looking at negative two plus i, okay? So there's our first look at how we divide complex numbers. All right, we're gonna try it again, but with uh, a slightly different format. I'll see you in a bit, bye.